Hello, everyone. Uh, on uh, November the 4th, there will be a Scorpio new moon. So we are going to take it apart uh, and going to look at the main uh, structures that this new moon is carrying. Each new moon is about renewers and new fresh starts. And Scorpio new moons are usually the deepest, the, the, the most profound, um, the um, really magical new moons because Scorpio rules deep emotions, actually rules all the scope of, of potential emotions here on the earth plane. And any sun moon conjunction, new moon, is about the hero's gamos, the sacred marriage. This particular new moon is really uh, partnership and relationship oriented, and not just because it's a new moon, the sun and the moon are joining, but because of its energy pattern. So let's take a look at uh, the, the drawings I prepared for you. First, we are going to take a peek at the new moon itself. This is for the Budapest chart. So whenever you are watching this in another country, please just locate uh, the new moon in, uh, for your destination and you will see the, uh, uh, the uh, placements. Uh, you can see uh, here that there's a sun moon in Scorpio and uh, Saturn is setting in the Budapest chart and you have a Juno-Venus Juno conjunction where in the, the, the Budapest chart you have the vertex uh, joint and then you have a Chiron, uh, Asterid Lilith and Dark Moon Lilith conjunction. Aries in the Budapest chart is on the Midheaven. It's not very nice because uh, Pluto is also squaring the uh, Midheaven and the uh, IC. And then you also have the Ceres um, uh, Lilith, the Black Moon Lilith conjunction. I highlighted these placements for you. And also, uh, I'm going to add the fact that we have uh, an, an enretic and an almost enretic planet in this chart. Uh, Mercury is almost enretic. It's at 28 degrees and change. It's going to move into Scorpio uh, by, the, uh, by the end of next day. And Venus is effect, effectively enretic because it's at 29 something. So whenever a planet is enretic, meaning that it's on the, the 30th degree, 29 something, it usually indicates in comic astrology that the native uh, wasn't able to surpass or absorb or understand or incorporate that particular archetype or archetypal situations that are, that are linked to that particular uh, celestial object. In this case, of course, since this is a space-time moment, so there's no previous incarnation, we can say that it re relates to the previous period, okay? And a couple of days ago, I already told you that there's a venus Juno conjunction practically on the galactic center, which is Sagittarius 27 degrees and 30 uh, minutes. So... Venus is already separating from that uh, alignment and is actually almost uh, entering Capricorn. So it's going to be out of this uh, placement. But you may remember that uh, the galactic center is one of the key celestial areas in comic astrology. Uh, all these uh, key celestial areas uh, uh, denote comic dilemmas. And uh, uh, this particular one uh, carries the, uh, the dilemma of whether to be or not to be, whether to be in a, in a physical body, whether to come into incarnation to the physical plane, the earth plane, or remain as an energetic uh, uh, light being and go just, just be. Okay, so this is, this, is, this is the dilemma. And the Juno-Venus conjunction by itself carried the meaning of the um, situation where Either you are the, the, the wife and your husband has a lover or you are the lover, okay? So wife and lover are joined here. And in the Budapest chart, you had the vertex, which means the, uh, the point where you don't have free will. So things are getting out of hand. Things are not, you are not able to actually uh, really stay on top of, of uh, the course of events because they, they, get, they get out of hand. Juno is the wife, the spouse, and Venus is the lover. 
And here Juno is at the galactic center. So to me, this suggests that this particular new moon uh, is carrying the meaning of whether I should stay in the relationship or I should go. And Venus, the lover, is trying to leave the, the situation, but is unable to because it gets stuck as, as being an erratic. It's quite interesting, the situation it describes. Mercury is almost anoretic, but it, it's not yet in this type of uh, moment in time, but it will be certainly anoretic in uh, half, an, uh, half a day or so. By, by next day, it's going to be anoretic anyway. And then it's going to move into Scorpio. So it's going to lose its nice, objective, balanced uh, way of communication. And it's going to enter into Scorpio territory, which always... Um, becomes very heavy when Scorpio, when, uh, whenever a planet is in Scorpio, it gets this flavor of the underworld and, and heavy emotions. Saturn is uh, uh, descending in the Budapest chart. Uh, as there is different, so I'm not going to, to delineate this. But if we do have a Chiron asteroid Lilith, dark moon Lilith conjunction, that is very revealing because Chiron and uh, asteroid are retrograde, so they are going to move inward, they are going to be uh, uh, reflective, so you can actually ponder on your karmic wounds related to um, fire, aggression, wars, uh, all kinds of uh, things related to blood and aggression. And uh, Lilith, the asteroid Lilith, uh, is the, the first turning point of the Lilith myths. Uh, describing the, the point when Lilith tells Yahweh that she doesn't want to be below. Actually, uh, Adam, first he tells Adam that she doesn't want to be below. And this is, this is, uh, this denotes the, the concept of revolt against injustice. And then the, the, the dark moon is describing the, the second turning point of the Lilith myths when Lilith uh, uh leaves paradise on its on her own volition and it's not she's not going back uh, even though Yahweh puts a curse on her and she accepts the curse and it's important for you to understand that this doesn't mean that you are going to be actually cursed it's it's much more deeper it's it's a, the sense that uh I'm not going to stay in a situation which is hum humbling and and degrading and uh, and bad for me, and I don't care. But I leave. I'm leaving, and I don't care even if I am going to be cursed because of my decision. So that's what it means. So all that is uh, again linked to relationship issues and relationship problems. And then you have the Sarah's uh, Black Moon Lilith conjunction, and Black Moon is the third. Uh, installment of the um, of the uh, Sarah of the uh, Lilith myths, and it's conjunct Sarah's at the moment. Uh, the Black Moon denotes uh, the ability to address the situation courageously, openly, uh, in a very wise and ripe manner, and resolve it in a way that nobody would believe would be resolved. And then Ceres, of course, again, is retrograde at the moment. It's, uh, it denotes nurturing of all or sorts. So uh, these two archetypes are separating at the moment uh, as uh, the, the Black Moon is always uh, direct and Ceres is at the moment retro retrograde. So maybe in a week or so, they're going to be totally separated. So that is one uh, uh, important um, mo uh, feature of the new moon. Here I, I'm going to show you the, those uh, celestial objects that are around 10, 12 degrees. This is again for the Budapest chart, so you won't have this configuration. That is why I'm not, I didn't even bother actually um, uh, drawing it separately, but I'm just going to show you that this is one of my favorite uh, uh, configurations. I call it uh, a brilliant cut because this is what you have on, on uh, one side of the opposition, you have a perfect trapeze, the classic trapeze with the uh, sex size and trines. And on the other side, you have a T. But this is good for the uh, Budapest chart, so I'm not going to delineate it, this for you. Uh, you do have, we do have a couple of other stuff. We have yods, 
uh, fingers of fate and we also have uh, uh, what I call a lame boomerang. This is what I, I would like to show you because you will have this anywhere you live uh, up on in the sky at the moment of the new. This is, this is what I call a lame boomerang. It's not really a boomerang because you don't have the closing semi between Uranus and the triple conjunction of Chiron, uh, Asteroid Lilith and Dark Moon Lilith. It's missing here. Uh, but you do have the, the Yod, the finger of fate, involving the Sun-Moon conjunction, Ceres uh, Lilith and the triple conjunction of Chiron, uh, Asteroid Lilith, Dark Moon Lilith. Uh, so that's, that's one thing, as I explained to you, uh, this particular new moon is uh, about relationship issues, and it's quite interesting that Uranus is opposite the new moon, giving you a boost of energy uh, either to change or to renew or to just just escape from whatever you don't want to, to uh, continue to do. So that is the boomerang opposition here. And of course, there's a lot of pain and a lot of suffering involved, but also nurturing and the, the ability to do the right thing, because that's what Lilith uh, suggests, the, 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 the Black Moon Lilith suggests. Um, there are also some interesting other transcendental celestial objects. Let's take a look at the very tight orb asteroids uh, entering the picture. On the sun-moon conjunction, you have Astarte and Minerva. Astarte is Ishtar, so a, a, a very ancient goddess who represents both love and war, so both life and destruction. She's a very, very strong archetype, close to the original creator goddess, but of course not the creator goddess, just a, a, one of the, her forms in Mesopotamia and in, in regions of Asia. And uh, then uh, Minerva is the, uh, vis the goddess of wisdom in Roman mythology. She is not exactly a, a copy-paste counterpart of Pallas Athena, although uh, they usually, that's how they usually look at uh, her. She's a little bit less than Pallas Athena because Pallas Athena is not just the goddess of wisdom, but she's also the goddess of, of or savior of Athens, a protector of Athens. So uh, she, she uh, embodies protection, protective wars, home saving wars and, and, uh, and fights. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, Minerva only, only, she is only the, the goddess of wisdom. On uh, the Ceres Black Moon conjunction, you have Persephone. And Persephone is the, the wife of Hades. She is the queen of the underworld, but also the daughter of the Demeter. And uh, Demeter is uh, the uh, um, goddess of agriculture. And whenever she has her daughter in the up, up world, everything is growing, everything is in, in abundance, uh, everything uh, is ripening. Uh, and whenever she's down at, in the underworld with her husband, then uh, that these are the infertile, uh, dark, gloomy, and cold uh, months of the year. Um, the, uh, so this, this shows the ability to live in both worlds. Uh, she is the, I mean, uh, she represents uh, the, the true psychopomp. Usually it is Hermes or, or, or Mercury that is labeled as the psychopomp, as the, uh, the, uh, the leader of souls, because uh, Mercury is able to cross uh, into different dimensions and live uh, in, in any of the, these uh, worlds. But it, it's really Persephone who does this on her own volition because Hermes, Mercury does it uh, because she, he carries messenger, messenger, messages. So it's not, so he's the messenger and not really the psychopomp. I consider uh, Persephone the true psychopomp. On the triple conjunction on Chiron, you have the asteroid Veritas, which is truth. So the truth will come out. And on Uranus, you have abund Abundantia, which is, she was the Roman god goddess of abundance. 
And this is interesting because the Uranus opposition to the sun moon suggests the moving away from marriage, the moving away from some uh, partnership. And there's always the dilemma whether I'm going to be okay when I move out. And Uranus conjunct abundantia suggests that yes, you will be okay. There will there are some hidden abundances, hidden treasures for you to uncover and to rely on if you move away. Now, the uh, the last uh, drawing that I'm going to show you is the fixed star placements. There are three important fixed stars in this configuration. The sun moon conjunction is on Alpheca and Acros. And uh, Alpheca is Alpha uh, Corona Borealis. So the uh, feminine happiness, the feminine garland, the feminine crown, and it uh, suggests a, a joy, a joyful event, a joyful uh, life uh, that I, I love my life and I love my my being feminine, whereas uh, our crux is the alpha crux, the uh, uh, alpha star of the southern uh, cross. You can't see it from the uh, northern hemisphere. It's a very uh, southern constellation, almost at the, the, the top of it. Actually, crux, uh, our crux is almost at the uh, south uh, pole. So you never see it from the northern hemisphere. And Akruk denotes the acceptance of coming into life into a physical body. So the acceptance of burdens, the acceptance of human existence, and actually the ability to enjoy it or the ability to carry whatever cross you need to carry. So those are two very important stars. And then you have Aldebaran, which is the Alpha star of Taurus. And Taurus is the... Um, um, constellation that you're going to see or you can actually already see after sunset, a couple of hours after sunset, Orion, Orion uh, is coming up and uh, Taurus is above uh, the western shoulder of Orion or Orion, I never know how to pronounce it anyway, wait, Orion let's, let's use that and uh, Aldebaran is one of the um, it is the alpha star of, of Taurus it is the, the eye of the bull and it is one of the uh, royal stars of Persia. And all four royal stars of Persia denote success, but there's a nemesis as, uh, they will have nemes a nemesis as uh, Bernard Brady uh, wrote, wrote in her articles and books. And uh, Aldebaran's nemesis is integrity, which means that you need to keep your integrity at all costs. You need to do what is right. You can't cut corners, okay? And if you do that, you will be successful. This is what the sun uh, moon conjunction in Scorpio, the new moon in Scorpio suggests to us. Uh, use it in good health. Happy new moon and thank you for listening. Bye-bye.